Hey everyone, uh, this is Dr. Mungli. Today I am going to discuss a question which is based on gluconeogenesis process. So the question goes something like this. Under fasting conditions, catabolism of branched chain amino acids, isoleucine and valine will yield propionyl CoA as their one of the catabolic intermediate. Propionyl CoA while converting to glucose needs sequence of which of the following enzymes in correct order okay so option a and a to f are given a variety of enzymes are given in option from option a to option f so you need to pick up the one that is uh, the sequence of enzymes that are used to take propionyl coa into glucose molecule okay so first thing is to know like what is this gluconeogenesis so the gluconeogenesis is the conversion of non carbohydrate sources into glucose molecule i have made a detailed video on this particular concept and i am giving you the link to that video here in this particular video so which is appearing above right corner right now it is appearing there in the right corner so take a note of that and if you want to know more about gluconeogenesis process you can watch that video and as well you can come back to this question to answer it or if you know about gluconeogenesis you can go away like uh, you can straight away go to answer by yourself and also I am explaining which all the correct uh, uh, sequence of enzymes here now in brief gluconeogenesis in the gluconeogenesis process so the lactate coming from anaerobic glycolysis will be converted to glucose and alanine coming from skeletal muscle breakdown can be converted to glucose and the glycerol coming from triacylglycerol breakdown can be converted to glucose and propionyl coa coming from catabolism of branched chain amino acids like isoleucine and valine and also propionyl coa can come from oxidation of odd number carbon fatty acids Whenever odd number carbon fatty acids undergo beta oxidation process, in the final step, propion you get propionyl CoA, and that propionyl CoA, if the person is in fasting condition, so it can be going into glucose formation. Other source of propionyl CoA is of dietary fibers, which are digested by bacterium my, gut microbes present in the proximal colon, so they will also yield propionyl CoA. So let's see how exactly propionyl CoA go into glucose formation. So the propionyl CoA will be converted initially into methyl melanyl CoA. This is done by propionyl CoA carboxylase enzyme and this enzyme needs biotin. So listen to this carefully. Propionyl CoA is converted to methyl melanyl CoA. This job is done by propionyl CoA carboxylase enzyme which needs biotin vitamin biotin once you get methyl melanyl CoA methyl melanyl CoA is converted to succinyl CoA this job is done by methyl melanyl CoA mutase enzyme and that enzyme needs deoxyadenosyl cobalamin that is vitamin it's a kind of vitamin B12 once you get succinyl CoA so succinyl CoA is a TCA cycle intermediate and that is converted to succinate and succinyl coa to succinate is done by succinate thiokinase enzyme once you get succinate succinate is con converted to fumarate and fumarate is converted to malate in tcs cycle and the malate moves out of mitochondria into the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm malate is converted to oxaloacetate and oxaloacetate is converted to phosphoenol pyruvate and then the this job is done by phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase enzyme conversion of oxaloacetate into phosphoenol pyruvate is done by phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase enzyme and that can be written as pepck so i am going to round off the choices that i got pepck here so which begins with uh, pepck so note that so from going from propionyl CoA, so propionyl CoA to methyl melanyl CoA done by propionyl CoA carboxylase. So look for is there any enzymes naming propionyl CoA carboxylase. 
option A. So there is no propionyl coa carboxylase. That's pyruvate carboxylase. It's not propionyl coa carboxylase. So that means it is wrong. So now we have propionyl coa mutase. So this is not an enzyme which converts propionyl coa to methyl melanyl coa. It should be propionyl coa carboxylase. Any other choices? So the, you don't have propionyl coa carboxylase in the beginning. Or as you can see, option B here. So uh, this is pyruvate carboxylase anyway. So we don't have any choice which is giving you propionyl coa carboxylase. Okay, now let's move on to the second enzyme that is methyl melanyl coa mutase. So we don't have any choice here which are which is mentioning methyl melanyl coa mutase. Now let's move on to the third important enzyme and that is phosphenyl pyruvate carboxykinase. So there are two choices here which mean, which begins with phosphenyl pyruvate carboxykinase PPCK that is option B and option D you have a PPCK here seems to be going towards correct answer. Now once you get phosphenyl pyruvate, phosphenyl pyruvate is converted to 2 phosphoglycerate, 2 phosphoglycerate is converted to 3 phosphoglycerate, 3 phosphoglycerate converted to 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate and 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate can combine with dihydroxyacetone phosphate to make fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. Now, the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate will be converted to fructose 6 phosphate done by fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase. Now, that enzyme is there in option D. See, this fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase is here. Now, once you get fructose 6-phosphate, so fructose 6-phosphate can be converted to glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose by glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. So, glucose 6-phosphatase is there in option D. So, if you go by like, uh, like this, so propionyl CoA into glucose formation, so propionyl CoA to glucose, you need propionyl CoA carboxylase, methyl melanyl CoA mutase, phosphenyl pyruvate carboxykinase, fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase, glucose 6-phosphatase. These are the important enzymes that are needed to convert two molecules of propionyl CoA into one molecule of glucose. So in that sense, option D is a correct answer for this particular question. Some of you, if you had difficulty in understanding what I am explaining here, it means you should have a sound idea or sound knowledge about gluconeogenesis process. So you can watch my video on gluconeogenesis which is very detailed which is around uh, 20 minutes video. I am sure you are going to understand in detail about gluconeogenesis and also regulation by watching that video and then you can come back to this question then you will know for sure why option D is correct. Thanks for watching. I will come up with some other video some other time. Till then take care and bye.